another video with my deadly new microphone um, and on my tablet, which makes me feel really like I'm coming down on you. Okay, so today's video, I want to talk quickly about um, the ATO and what to do when you get into trouble with the ATO. So, and I use the phrase getting into trouble, which is not, okay, anyway, I don't work for the ATO. I don't have a relationship with the ATO. I'm not licensed to provide advice on how to deal with the ATO if you have a tax debt. But I have some things that I want to say, right? It can be scary. And, I, and I'm speaking from personal experience here, okay? So I'm not licensed. You can't sue me. I take no responsibility for any losses you may incur in listening to this video. But I want to talk about, right, you get a tax debt. And you might owe money because you, um, so I'm talking to business owners. So we underestimate how much money we need to put aside for our tax bill. So when you were an employee back in the olden days and you're an employee, your employer says he's going to pay, they're going to pay you this much money, right? And what they do is they pay this much to you. Every fortnight they give you this much. So they're going to pay this much, right? Oh, let's say they're going to pay five bucks, five dollars for your time today. You earned five dollars. You only get four. Where's this one go? You, they give you four. They put four into your bank account and one dollar they put into another account for your, that's your, got your name on it and it's called ATO Lisa. And so on your behalf, they put a dollar of your money into another account that goes to the ATO. So at the end of the financial year, on the 30th of June, they can then calculate how much you are required to pay the ATO. And so rather than say giving you all $5, all of your money, 100% of your money, and then you going on a spending spree and spending some of it, and some people will save it, and some people will spend it, but you've always got to give some money to the ATO. So instead of giving you 100%, they're like, Lisa, we know you have some problems. We'll only give you $4 and $1 of this. You work 52 weeks, there's $52 in your ATO account that lives over here that you never ever see. You never see it. And then it turns out at the end of the financial year, all you needed to pay was $30 in tax. They give you back the 22, that kind of thing, right? So your tax is always being taken out. Like it's not a big deal. The problem is, is when you're an employee, uh, when you're a business owner, when you are the boss, you earn the money and there's no employer putting anything aside. You got to put that money aside for yourself. So this is where the problem is, is because we as business owners, because particularly in those first years of business, you don't know exactly what you're expen you, There's a really good chance, you can, no, no matter how hard you work, it's really hard to estimate what your expenses are. You think you know what, how, many, how much revenue you're going to make. You may not. You may have overestimated your personal living expenses, all that kind of stuff. So in the end, you end up not putting enough aside and you accidentally spend it or inadvertently you spend it by mistake. And it doesn't mean you're buying Lamborghinis and Porsches and whatnot. You're probably just buying a new computer or more, you know, you're probably just paying your rent with it. So what do you do? So they send you a bill and it turns out you owe them some money. The most important thing in my experience is that you call them. Hey, it's Lisa here. I know that I've got a tax bill. Can we have a chat about it? And then, so there may be, it may be a situation where um, you don't quite, you know that you haven't, you might not have put your tax returns in for ages. And so all you have to do, you call and say, hey, I haven't done it for ages. And they'll say, can you do it by the end of the month? And you go, yeah, okay. Then you'll know exactly what you owe or what you're owed. So there's that. In, so they might say to you, get everything up to date and then let's talk. And they'll give you, a, probably give you a time, you know, like one or two months or whatever it is. And then you get it all up to date, you submit everything, and then you find out exactly what you owe. The most important thing is actually talking to them. You need to talk to them. And then you just, all you're doing then, you call them and you go, oh, okay, so I owe $2,000. I don't have $2,000 on me. They're like, okay, well, they'll probably say something like, oh, okay, well, how long, you know, how much could you pay a month? Let's do a payment plan. And so when the, and then you do a payment plan and 
Gen in my experience, you've got 15 months, 12 to 15 months to pay that payment plan off. So if you divide $2,000 by 15 pay for 12 payments, let's say 12 payments for, you know, to be conservative, then that's what you pay off per month. The most important thing that you also need to do, so you, you're traveling along, you, you arrange a payment plan, so you're going to pay them $200 a month extra on top of what you, you know, just you've got to pay it every single month. Make sure you pay it every single month do not not pay it if it looks like you can't pay it call them up don't call them on the day that it's due call them three or four days beforehand so that you can then renegotiate your payment plan now of course i'm just this is my experience i don't know if this is what they still do um you need to talk to them. You need to talk to them. 95, no, it's not even 95, 99%, actually 99.5% of the time. Actually, I think it's really 100% of the time. Whenever I've spoken to the ATO, they just want, they want the money. They need the money. Why do they need the money? They need to build the hospitals and the roads and the whatnots, the grants. <laughs> you know, like every everything that you get from the government comes from our taxes. So um, they want you to pay the money. They need you to pay the money. The country needs you to pay the money. So they want you to pay the money and they want to facilitate that or way of getting you to pay the money. You just have to lean into it. You just have to do what... You just have to communicate with them. And I know how hard it is, like if you have anxieties and, and all that kind of, and I know 100%, I know exactly what you're talking about. I have been there um, and you are trying to avoid, if you've got avoidant behaviour, you know, it makes it really, really hard. But if you can push through that or get someone to support you to do that, just get someone to support you. The other thing that I've always done is I've always had a, um, a document on my um, phone or on my computer or just in Drive, Google Drive, that lists my conversations. So I have my conversations. So sometimes I write the conversations out that I think I'm going to have. So I, write all, I have my tax file number there, uh, full name, tax file number, anything that I c think, I put it there. And then when I talk to them, I'm typing as I'm talking to them. And then every time I make a payment, I write the date down, the amount, and then I write the transaction reference number from my bank so when when you when you make a direct debit into the ato or i think it's bill of code like yeah i think it's bpay um so you just write the trend the the receipt number write it down so that it's all all the, every month and you can see it going down you can start from if it's 12 months there'll be 12 lines of payments date payment and the amount and you just write it down like that and it, you know, and it goes fast. It goes really fast and you can do it. The worst thing you can do is panic. The worst thing you can do is to close your, well, no, actually, I shouldn't say that. Some businesses, one of the problem, I was going to say the worst thing you can do is to stop trading. That may not necessarily be the case, depending on the size of your debt um, and also depending on how your business is structured. If your business is actually losing money, it's probably not a good, if you're trading, there's a term called, um, growing broke so your business is growing but you're actually getting broke because fundamentally there's your pricing or your revenue structure is wrong so there's that's a conversation you need to have with your accountant so I just wanted to I just wanted to have to say and I, I, I've told this story multiple times in my training so I don't feel like there's anything wrong with saying it here because um, we have lots of participants who have who the they just don't want to talk to the ATO and I was like honey you got to talk to the ATO you got to talk reach out to them they will help you. they won't they're not going to do your tax returns for you but they will put your mind at ease I think in if you keep talking to them I think they will do uh, my experience is that you just be honest with them be calm be honest you are required to pay if you earn money you know Someone said to me once, you know, the fact that you're going to pay all this tax means you're actually earning money and it's fantastic. You just can't spend <laughs> that money. Like you can't spend the bit that doesn't belong to you. You are a tax collector. When you collect, when you get paid GST, when I, when I issue an invoice and they pay me money, that's GST I'm collecting on behalf of the country. It's not my money to spend. It's my, my account, my old accounts are probably watching this video going, who the hell, what, why is she giving advice? <laughs> it's not your money. It's not your money. They're probably thinking, this woman 
we know what she's done in her past. How can she be giving advice? But yeah, I just wanted to say, like, I feel for you if you do have an ATO debt. And I know how scary it is and I know how anxiety inducing it is, but it is not impossible. You may have to also, and I've gone over my 10 minutes, but it you may also have to do things like limit your spending and um, yeah, just make some personal cuts for a little while. You have to do that stuff. This is just the way it is. And um, they do want you to pay it and you will have to pay it so just start paying it bit by bit and it will get it all fixed so i understand how hard it is i really i really really understand how hard it is um and i know how scary it can be but you have to you have really have no choice but to um plot along and try and get it all paid off bit by bit and learn and also then learn like make sure that once you've once you've sorted yourself out, go, okay, because the, the other thing too, you're paying off your $200 a week on top of earning income to then pay the next lot. So you're actually paying, you're paying last year's stuff and paying this year's stuff at the same time. So that period, that payment, repayment period when you are on your payment plan is probably going to be one of the hardest years you'll ever have. But once you've sorted it out, once it's done, it'll be done and then just making sure you put put your tax money into a separate account so that you don't get into trouble so that it's there for the 30th of June the following year. Yeah, and just take some hits to your personal living expenses for a little while. And once you've done that, then you'll be fine. And then over time, as your business grows, you will learn what you can and can't do. You can le you'll learn the, the tricks of the trade. I mean, I know that there'll be people who know how to minimise tax and I don't know how, I don't know that stuff. That's a whole, that's a, a world outside of my um, experience. But, you know, if you ever make it to that big, <laughs> you're not watching my YouTube videos. <laughs> you're paying an expensive accountant on Eagle Street or something. So, so, yeah, pay your taxes. And if you can't pay your taxes, talk to the tax office because they will help you.